All right, section 35 is a little bit of extra practice with the infinite sum. So we're just going to do like three quick, <laughs> air quotes, quick uh, problems to kind of refresh what we learned in section 34. Because I know section 34 is pretty difficult, so I thought maybe we could do a couple extra today. All right, so it says use the limit process with right endpoints to find the area between y equals x cubed and the x, x axis on 0 to 1. All right, so what you always want to do is you want to think about your interval, 0 to 1, and you want to think about dividing it into n subintervals. Okay, we call these partitions. Okay, so if I have 1 over n, then the next one is going to be at 2 over n, 3 over n, and so on. Okay, so if I talk about the i right endpoint, it's happening after i of these 1 over n's. So it's going to be i times 1 over n, which is going to be just i over n. Okay, so that's going to be the location of that, that right endpoint. So if I want to come up with the height at that location, its height is going to go into this function here. Okay, so it's going to be i over n cubed or i cubed over n cubed. Okay, the width of each of these it's just that b minus a over n that we talked about. It's just, you know, your total width was 1, and then we divided into n subintervals, so I have 1 over n. So that's enough to set up my area formula, which is always going to be a limit as n goes to infinity. And we're going to have a sigma from i equals 1 to n of the width times the height. for each of those rectangles. So we have i, or we have n number of rectangles, right? So the width is going to be 1 over n, and the height comes from the function by plugging in that i over n, i cubed over n cubed, like you said, okay? So when I simplify, I'm going to have i cubed over n to the fourth and I can always pull out anything that doesn't have to do with that i, right? As long as it's being multiplied, well I can pull out. Oh, let me write my limit. You don't have to write your limit each time. I'm pretty, pretty nice about that since you already have to write your sigmas each time. So we have the 1 over n to the 4, and then we have the sigma of i cubed, which we actually haven't done the sigma for i cubed yet. So if you look back on that page where you had the summation formula, there was a summation formula for i cubed. So in your notes, this is on page uh, 125. Okay, so the summation for i cubed from i equals 1 to n. The easiest way to write it is n squared over n plus 1 squared all over 4. Okay, so we're going to use that. So continuing on. So it's kind of a side note. So continuing on from above, I'm going to have the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n to the 4, and then I'm going to have n squared over n plus 1 squared all over 4. So we can reduce out some things. n squared and n to the 4th reduce out to n squared. And when I foil out the n plus 1 squared, I get n squared plus 2n plus 1. Whoops. all over the 4n squared. And I bring that 4n squared everywhere, so I get a 1 fourth plus 1 over 2n plus 1 over 4n squared. So as I take that limit, this will go away and this goes away, so your answer ends up being 1 fourth. Okay, and that is the answer. All right, so hopefully that makes more sense after, you know, yesterday's lesson. And so let's try this next one. So it says, use the limit process with right endpoints to find the area uh, between y equals 4 minus x squared, the x-axis, and the vertical lines x equals 1 and x equals 2. All right, so if I have x equals 1, where am I? I don't think I drew this very well. So this is 4 minus x squared. So here's 2 and 0. So I'm finding... Um, the area between 1 and 2. I'm actually finding this area right here. I shaded in the wrong spot. All right, so this is going to be a little bit harder because we're not starting at 0. 
Okay, so when you start at 1 and then go to 2, okay, again, we talk about dividing it into n rectangles, which, you know, this distance is 1. So if I divide into n rectangles, the width is going to be 1 over n still. This one's going to be 1 over n and so on. But this this first endpoint is not 1 over n because I've already I'm not starting at 0 anymore. I'm starting at 1. Okay, so it's going to be 1 plus 1 over n. And then this one's going to be 1 plus 2 over n and so on. So if I want to get the ith endpoint, it's going to be 1 plus 1i over n. So 1 plus i over n. And we plug that into this formula to get the height into our function. So I'm going to have 4 minus 1 plus i over n squared. Okay? So we'll simplify before we begin. So when I simplify 4 minus 1 is 3, I'm going to have minus and a minus, so I'm going to have plus 2i over n, and then minus i squared over n squared. Okay, so this is going to be a complicated one because we were starting at 1. I should have started at 0. Maybe it would be a little bit nicer. I think your homework ones all start at 0. All right, so my area then, I'll leave off the limit for now. I'm going to have i equals 1 to n, and I'm going to have my width, which the width is still 1 over n times the height, which is 3 plus 2i over n minus i squared over n squared. So I multiply it in, and I get 3 over n plus 2i over n squared plus, I don't know, minus now. Um, let's see, n cubed is on the bottom, and then i squared is on top. Okay, and we do that thing where we pull out anything with the n's or the numbers. So we're going to have i equals 1 to n. I'm going to have to, oops, <laughs> my pen is just still doing that. So 3 over n, i equals 1 to n, and I'm going to have 1 there. So that's going to be the first summation formula. I'm going to have plus 2 over n squared, and I'm going to have the summation of i, so that's the second summation formula, and then minus, oops, I'll do minus there, so minus 1 over n cubed, and the summation of i squared, and that's the last summation formula. Okay, so we know those. So if I just have 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1 n times is going to be n. So I'm going to have 3 over n times n for the first one. And then I have 2 over n squared times the summation for i was the Gauss formula, n times n plus 1 over 2. And then I'm going to have minus 1 over n cubed. Um, and then I'm going to have that in, I'm going to run out of room. Let me write it down here. So minus 1 over n cubed, and I'm going to have n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Okay, and it's all about some sign now. Okay, now if you're good at this, you might have realized that we're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity anyway. So as you're going, if you want to eliminate the terms that aren't going to matter, sometimes that's useful. So if I was like looking here, I know that I'm going to have to like foil it out and I'm going to have an n squared, and I'm going to have an n squared on the bottom, right? But the rest of those terms are all going to be divided by n squared, which will they'll all go away, okay? So you can kind of shortcut this. Um, and if I did that, like, I, I could go directly to the point where I say 3 plus 2n squared over 2n squared, and then that rest is going to cancel, and then I'm going to have minus and then again, I'm going to notice that as I foil out all of this, I'm going to have n times n times 2n, which is going to be 2n cubed over 6n cubed, and then the rest is going to cancel. So if you notice that, you can save yourself some steps, okay? But be very careful as you're doing that. So you're going to get 3 plus 1 minus 1 third, okay? And if you don't understand that, that's fine. Just go ahead and do it like the long way with multiplying it out. So we get 4 minus 1 third which is 12 thirds minus 1 third. 
so our answer is 11 thirds. Okay, so you can do that if you want to. Um, it's up to you. So let me check the answer really quick. Make sure I didn't make a mistake. Uh oh, maybe I did make a mistake. Um, what do I need? I think the answer should be five thirds. So what did I do here? Maybe I should do it the long way. Let me pause and find my mistake. I found my mistake. You guys were probably screaming at me. This is the disadvantage of uh, doing this at home, right? Because <laughs> I don't have you guys telling me corrections as I'm doing it in class. So my mistake was right here. So this should be, well, no, wait, right here. That should be a plus as I was boiling that out. I forgot my plus. All right, so as I distribute, I'm going to have four minus one still, which is going to be three. Then I have minus two i over n minus i squared over n squared. So this will be a minus here. It will be an easy fix. This will be a minus. This will be a minus. And this will be a minus. This will be a minus. Um, that will be a minus. So I won't have 12 over 3 because it will be 2 minus 1 third. Um, so then 2 minus 1 third is going to be 6 thirds minus 1 third, which is 5 thirds. So sorry about that. I know some of you guys were probably like, oh, bonus point. Uh, but that's kind of a disadvantage. I don't want to like re-record it because I've spent so long already. All right, so let's do the next one. So uh, Riemann is another uh, German mathematician. He actually studied under Gauss, and he came up with a uh, rectangular method. So he's the one that kind of came up with this uh, way to approximate areas. So think Riemann whenever you see that word rectangles, because um, you will see his name sometimes pop up on the um, AP test. I know he was on my AP test. My teacher had never used his name, so I was very confused. Okay, so we've learned that we can use right hand, left hand. We've also learned we've also learned something called the midpoint rule. So in fact, you can choose any x value on the i interval. So if you divide into n rectangles, I mean, I could use the midpoint to come up with the height. I could use the left endpoint. I could use a right endpoint. I could use really any point on that interval. So I could use like a point right here, right, and then go across. Um, so it doesn't matter. We can use any type of endpoint. Okay, so sometimes there's a convenience to choosing strange endpoints. And I'm not going to really give you one like this, like on a quiz or anything. Um, just kind of understand why we want to choose other things, possibly. So it says, consider the region bounded uh, by the graph of f of x equals the square root of x and the x-axis on the interval 0 to 1. Evaluate the limit, limit as n goes to infinity, of um, sigma i equals 1 to n of f of ci. Uh, times delta x. So that's just your formula, you know, width times height for each one. Well, height times width is not that one. And now we're going to make our partition given by c sub i equals i squared over n squared. So they're not going to be the same widths. Okay. So basically what's happening is we have the interval 0 to 1. And the first subinterval, c i or c1, is going to be given by 1 squared over n squared. Okay, so it's going to be at 1 over n squared. And the second one is going to be at 2 squared over n squared, which is going to be 4 over n squared. So this first width was 1 over n squared, but the second width is 3 over n squared, right? You subtract them. 4 over n squared minus 1 over n squared is 3 over n squared. Now the next one's going to be at 9 over n squared. So its width is going to be 5 over n squared. Um, so you're going to continue that pattern. It's going to be a little bit weird. And you're going to continue until you get to 1. Okay, so that means that our width, our delta x, is going to be found by taking any, you know, the i interval minus the i minus 1 interval, those two right endpoints. So I'm going to have um, it's going to be a little bit messy, but the ith one, the ci minus ci minus 1, is going to be i squared over n squared, and the other one's going to be i minus 1 squared over n squared. So this is really going to be the hardest part, um, coming up with the width. So I'm going to have i squared over n squared minus i squared minus 2i plus 1 all over n squared 
which simplifies i squared minus i squared goes away. And I have plus 2i minus 1 all over n squared. So that's going to be the width of the interval. And the height, so we chose the square root thing for a reason, because our original function was the square root of x. So if I have the square root of i squared over n squared, I end up just getting i over n. So that's why it's convenient to use this i squared over n squared thing. Because now when I come up with my area, and I'll leave off the limit for now, i equals 1 to n, I'm going to have the width, which is 2i minus 1 over n squared, times the height, which when I plugged into that function, square root of x, it's reduced down to i over n. Okay, and then I just simplify. So I'm going to have i equals 1 to n, 2i squared minus um, i over n cubed, as, I'm, as I distribute this into here. All right, so I simplify, I break it apart. I have 2i squared over n cubed, so I'm going to have a 2 over n cubed out front, and then an i squared. And then we have a 1 over n cubed out front and an i. And that's being subtracted. So I'm going to have 2 over n cubed times summation for i squared, n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1, all over 6. Oops, not times. And then minus 1 over n cubed, the summation for i. That's the n times n plus 1 over 2. Coming from the Gauss formula. So we get that. So as I take the limit of all of this, remember a lot of it will go away. So you can go ahead and do that stuff where you're multiplying everything out, or you can kind of shortcut it. So hopefully you guys kind of have that shortcut down. So if I'm foiling these three out, I would have the very first term would be 2n cubed. And then I have times 2, so I'm going to have 4n cubed, all over 6n cubed. And then I'm going to have a bunch of junk that's going to be like over n anyway, over n or n squared or n cubed or whatever. It's going to go away. And then I'm going to have minus. As I FOIL this part out, I'm going to have something that starts out with n squared. And then I'm going to have divided by 2n cubed. All of that will end up going to 0 as well because it reduces out to 1 over 2n. So your answer then should just be 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds. Okay, so let me check really quickly. Yep, and that is our answer. Okay, so just kind of give you some perspective. Like you could use anything. You could use right endpoints, left left endpoints, or just a arbitrary endpoint. It doesn't matter. Okay, whatever is going to be easiest for your function. But for the most part, on your homework, right endpoints are the thing that you want to use. Okay, so use right endpoints for your homework. All right, hopefully that made sense. Um, like I said, this is the very last thing that we're going to do that involves this limit uh, as i equals 1 to n, it's the sigma stuff. We're not going to do sigmas anymore after this. We're just going to use antiderivatives. Okay, so it's going to be much, much easier. So rest assured that the next section will be much better.